Just like all of the other functions we've studied, the graph of tangent can be altered using our standard horizontal and vertical transformations. We can move a graph up, down, left, or right. We can reflect it vertically or horizontally, or we can stretch or compress it vertically or horizontally. Let's draw the graph of g of x equals 1 plus tangent x and label the period, the asymptotes, and the midline. I'm going to start with a graph of f of x equals tangent x, which of course has vertical asymptotes at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and is increasing between each of those asymptotes crossing the x-axis at negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0 pi, and 2 pi. Now the graph of g of x equals 1 plus tangent x should be a vertical shift 1 up from the tangent function. So what I'm going to do is take values I know and move them 1 up. I'm going to start with the values of tangent that are sitting right there on the midline of y equals 0. So I'm going to take values like negative pi comma zero and move them up one and zero comma zero and move it up one to zero comma one. I'll take pi comma zero and move it up to pi comma one. Now where tangent has x values that are multiples of pi over four, we also have nice y values. So for example, at negative pi over four, there's a y value of negative one. Let's move that up one unit. So now we have a value of negative pi over four comma zero. At negative three pi over four, tangent has a value of one. Let's move that up to be two. So at negative three pi over four, we have a y value of two. And at a value of negative 5 pi over 4, tangent has a value of negative 1. Let's move that up to be 0. So now I have negative 5 pi over 4 comma 0. I can repeat this in every period of tangent. Should get a little faster after that first one. For example, I have values at pi over 4 comma 2 now, at 3 pi over 4 comma 0, and at 5 pi over 4 comma 2. The vertical asymptotes are going to stay in the exact same places. When I move them up, they don't move. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch in some vertical asymptotes with a, a blue dashed line here just to kind of remind you that those don't move. And then finally we can sketch in tangent. So that's an increasing function going through the points we've identified. It might not be the most beautiful function. Now, I've probably not drawn the most beautiful function of, of tangent you've ever seen, but we could jump over to Desmos and look at what that would be if we drew it a little nicer. Again, you can see that the vertical asymptotes don't move and tangent just scoots up one unit. Now the period asymptotes and midline, let's add that piece. So the period is still pi. The midline has moved from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And the asymptotes are at vertical asymptotes at x equals n pi over 2, where n is an odd integer. All right, let's take a look at one more here. Let's draw h of x equals 2 tangent x on our axes below. This is a set of axes that already contains the graph of tangent, so now we need to make it 2 tangent x. And what we know from our transformations is that this should stretch the graph vertically by a factor of 2. So we can take all those y values we identified in the previous problem and just stretch those, not move them up one, but stretch them two, meaning multiply the y values by two. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to start with that nice tangent period that's between negative pi over two and pi over two. And let me just identify some y values on that and then multiply them by two. So for example, zero, zero, taking a y value of zero times two, we'd still have a value of zero. Pi over 4 comma 1, taking that y value and multiplying it by 2 would be a value of 2 instead of 1. So we'd have a value at pi over 4 comma 2. Uh, likewise, at negative pi over 4, 
we had a y value of negative 1. Multiplying that by 2, we now have a y value at negative 2. And so our asymptotes will still be in exactly the same place at x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2. And we'll just have a tangent graph that is more pronounced, it's more stretched between those asymptotes and that will just continue to repeat so we can continue to repeat that pattern of behavior just drawing these in if we want to verify by taking a look at the desmos graph we can add that graph of two tangent and you'll see it does in fact just kind of stretch the graph vertically same asymptotes exactly and so we're done. Now we want to list the period, asymptotes, and midline. So same period of pi, uh, same asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are at x equals n pi over 2, where n is an odd integer. And the midline is actually the same as a graph of tangent. So the midline would be at y equals 0. All right, now I've got a set for you to try. I would like you to graph v of t equals negative tangent t and s of t equals tangent 2t. For both of these, go ahead and list the period, asymptotes, and midline. Go ahead and pause this video Give it a try yourself. Make sure you can do it. Check it against Desmos to make sure you're right. And then jump back if you got stuck and we can talk about how to do it. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and draw V of T equals negative tangent T. We already have a set of axes with tangent T drawn. Looks exactly the same as tangent X. So I'm not going to go through describing it again. Negative tangent t is a negative applied to the outside of the function. That's a vertical change in the graph. It's a vertical reflection. So all we do is take every y value we currently see and invert it over the x-axis. For example, we take a value of pi over 4, comma 1, and make it pi over 4, comma negative 1. We take a value of negative pi over 4, comma, negative 1, and make it a value negative pi over 4, comma, 1 instead. Now, there is no negation of 0, so the value of 0, 0 would still be at 0, 0. And we can draw in now the first period. Instead of tangent being a function that always increases between its two vertical asymptotes, now tangent is a function that always decreases between its two vertical asymptotes. And so we have a function always decreasing, same vertical asymptotes, same period, same midline. So as we list these, the period is pi, the midline is still y equals 0, and the vertical asymptotes are at x equals n pi over 2, where n is an odd integer. All right, the second one we had to graph was s of t equals tangent 2t. Now, the 2 is on the inside of the function now. We've replaced t with 2t. And when we do a replacement like that, where we replace t with 2t, we're causing a horizontal transformation of the graph. And in this case, we're compressing the graph by a factor of 2. Remember those horizontal transformations are always a little backwards of what you might think they're going to be. So it doesn't make the graph twice as wide, it makes the graph twice as narrow. It's a compression. And so if you imagine that very first period of tangent that's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the one centered on the y-axis, we're going to pull that in and make it narrower by a factor of 2. So instead of moving between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, this one is going to move between negative pi over 4 
and pi over 4. And so we're going to pull it in. Still going to be increasing, but it's going to be increasing between those two vertical asymptotes. The next one would be between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. with an x-intercept at pi over 2 comma 0. And then the next one between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And so we can see the repeating element of tangent there. So we have had some changes now. The period is no longer pi. The period is now pi over 2. The asymptotes vertical asymptotes are at x equals, well let's go through and just write a few of these out. We would have asymptotes at x equals negative 1 pi over 4, x equals pi, 1 pi over 4, x equals 3 pi over 4, x equals 5 pi over 4. Do you see the pattern? We still have odd numbers in the numerator, but now 4 in the denominator. So our vertical asymptotes are at n pi over 4, where n is an odd integer. And finally, the midline hasn't changed, so our midline is still at y equals 0. Okay, one more challenge for you, and then we are done with tangent. I want you to graph g of x equals 2 minus tangent x. So there's actually two different transformations happening here. Go ahead and give this a try. I've given you a separate graph below, empty axes to draw it on. Uh, pause the video, give that a try, check it in Desmo, see if you can reconcile it yourself if you were off, and then come back if you need some help. Okay, let's see how you did. Two transformations happening. The two in front is really just a vertical shift. And to see that, we could rewrite this 2 minus tangent x. It's the same thing as negative tangent x and then a plus 2 after it. So that's your vertical shift. The negative in front of tangent x is a vertical reflection. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to do a vertical reflection. And then we're going to do a shift two down. And remember when we do these, you always want to do the reflections and the compressions or stretches first. Then you do your shifts up, down, left, and right. Okay, so first a vertical reflection. I'm just going to draw that in on the top graph here. A vertical reflection is going to be a decreasing period of tangent. It doesn't shift our vertical asymptotes at all. We're just reflecting over the y-axis. Fix this one here just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to take that and uh, move it up two units. So I still have um, x-intercepts right now at negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0 pi, and 2 pi. I'm just going to take those to start with and move them up to. And imagine shifting that midline where the x-intercepts are up by two units. So I'm going to actually start by building that structure. I'm going to move the midline up two units. Just kind of like sketch that in in pencil here. And then I'm going to draw my vertical asymptotes in in the proper locations. Notice those have not moved. I'm going to sketch those in with pencil here. So those will be at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and negative 3 pi over 2, just to name a few. And then finally, I'm going to put in the values where the tangent crosses that midline. So 0 comma 2 is one place, pi comma 2 is another place, 2 pi comma 2 is another place, negative pi comma 2, and negative 2 pi comma 2. So now I know where that tangent crosses the midline. Now I can just duplicate that reflected graph of tangent into the structure I've built. 
And so we've got a tangent function that's decreasing between any two vertical asymptotes. And we can go ahead and write the period, which has not changed, it's still pi. The midline, which has changed, it's now y equals 2. And the vertical asymptotes, which have not changed, they are at x equals n pi over 2, where n is an odd integer. Done.